Yo, what's up, guys, and welcome to the Movie Newbie. My name is Jabril Sahimi, and I am the Newbie. Oliver Mangum, writer, producer, fellow film lover, occasionally capable of insight. Rafael Luca, thespian, cinephile, and human golden retriever. So, yeah, enjoy the show. Yo, what's up, and welcome back to another episode of the Movie Newbie. I'm your host, Jabril Sahimi, and this is episode 86. As usual, I'm joined by the two guys, the two legends that. Stop! And yeah, all these all these years are bleeding right now. Please stop! Please, I'm begging you. I'm done. I'm done. Um, wow, that was very Andy Samberg of me. Very scatting. Um, very Brooklyn Nine Nine. But yeah, this is the final installment of our. Uh, keep keep rolling theme or the one take theme the long yeah. take theme the long and take we're theme. doing Victoria from 2015 and Raph how about you introduce the rest of this movie yeah um, so this movie is uh, a movie uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna do that impression again I gotta stop <laughs> doing I gotta stop doing it um, yeah directed by Sebastian uh, Schaefer or Schaffer. Um, it's uh, about a young Spanish woman who has recently moved to Berlin and she encounters um, kind of four locals that she has kind of a night with. Um, and it's a movie that takes place over one night, over one city, and all in one take. Um, so this is why... I no think cheats as well. No cheats, no. And only three goes at it. Uh, and they chose the third go. They chose the third take. Right on. Um, but yeah, I wanted to choose this one over Russian Ark, which is also an impressively um, made one take feature. Um, just because, I don't know, it's got that kind of European flair that I like. And it's got like a bit of more of, um, I don't know, it's got a bit more of energy and, and, and kinetic energy to it. Um, but I wanted to conclude our theme with this just because of the fact that it is one entire take, unlike the previous two. Um, and it stars Leila Costa, Frederick Lau. Um, I think I would just mention them as like the two kind of lead performances. Mm -hmm. um, but it's got a bit of an ensemble uh, of names that I will probably butcher, but friends, Rogowski. Who's uh, a, a really great up-and-coming actor. Yeah. Like he's, he's very popular in Germany, but... He's um, popping up in a lot of international Who, films at the moment. Is that he boxer? played a boxer. The yeah, boxer. boxer. The he looked the familiar. Yeah, no. I don't know if I've ever seen him before. Or he kind of looked, maybe he just has a look. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but like like Ollie said, yeah, popping up left and right. Uh, Barack Yigit uh, and Max Mauf um, are kind of the like the ensemble uh, mm. of actors. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a fascinating and overly ambitious uh and just an incredible piece of filmmaking mm -hmm. just from purely from kind of the the standpoint of let's do this in one take yeah, and yeah. we only get yeah. one shot at it i mean how you can't get more ambition when it, ambitious when it comes to film than that because there are so many moving pieces mm. so many things that can go wrong so many things that you have to rely on and as an actor watching this film for the first time uh well, like a few years ago I was terrified because I was like, man, like the 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 kind of a lot of the responsibility and a lot of the uh, the leadership is given to the actors and the performances because mm. they are mm. the central piece of of making sure this one take goes smoothly, as well as you know the camera person and the sound person following them along on their journey. But like it is very performative, and also I think the script there wasn't a script. Right? There wasn't. It was only fifteen pages long yeah. that yeah. they sent, and, and apparently was... not many people read the 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 script. Right. Le Leila Costa um, said herself that she had not uh, read the script. Well, I mean, and so offered. they have to Im improvise pretty much all of the dialogue and pretty all of the interaction. And yeah. it and feels like that. Stick to some 
I guess like a vague outline of where they need to yeah. go, basically. Yeah. But so that's a lot of weight to put on those actors' shoulders. Huge. Because I imagine that those three different you, you mentioned that they shot through this three different times. Yeah. And only three takes mm. they could use. Those three takes probably look radically different, not just in terms of the performances, yeah. or, but also just like what they actually did or said. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. They, it's like three entirely different cuts of of the same cloth, kind of. Mm. Um, and I believe that the director himself had to um, do a version of the film that is cut to show the producers yeah. and the, the funding so that there is a film in case those mm -hmm. three long takes or in right, case those right. three chances didn't go. Because yeah. I think after the third one, they ran out of budget. They ran out of money. So the yeah. third one was literally the last one. Mm. So and, and the fact that he had chosen the last take. Mm. Um, I guess it was more on the line. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So... First impressions, uh, I guess seeing it again, I was more of a critic. Mm. Uh, whereas the first time I watched it, I just, again, was completely galvanized by like the experience that it was giving me. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really focus too much on like, let's say the story or the plot or I was just like, oh my God, it's still rolling. The, the first time around. The first time right, around. Okay, yeah. Whereas this time around, I think I, 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 I was a lot harsher, mm. um, especially with the plot. Mm. Um, because I just feel like it loses the plot <laughs> <laughs> at the yeah. end. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. Um. So, but then again, it's the, the the magic of this film is is with um the filmmaking aspect of it. it. It's with like the creativity and the choreography and the composition of it. So I will still highly praise it for being so incredibly ambitious. Mm. Um. But yeah, it completely loses the plot at the end of the film. Yeah. Uh. Initial thoughts, guys. And and was it your first, first time? Yeah, it was my first Ooh, time. Yeah, okay. it was my Ooh. first time. But uh, yeah, just to give you a little thing, I watched it, and then I watched it again. Oh damn! In two X today, like in the gym, just oh, to to re to recap to recap because I really because the first time around, so I have an issue with the plot. Yeah, uh, I thought. And I have an issue with the fact that it was improvised. Um, like big ups to the actors for doing what they managed to do. But I think there was points where it just like I was completely I kind of faded out of what I was watching. And I was just kind of like, what what yella? Like, come on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Seriously, there was just bits where I was like, this is just like just yeah. keep going. Do like, you have come any on. specific uh, moments where you uh, were the like... first hour? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first hour. I got so bored that when the the heist, uh, well, not the heist, but like the yeah, bank robbery. Yeah, heist, okay, yeah, 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 I guess, yeah. yeah. The bank robbery bit, like the intense bit um, was good. And then again, the, the next hour was also kind of like, ugh, you know? So I feel like maybe there was, a, there was an issue with pacing in this movie. And... Um, that's why I was like, okay, the second time, maybe let me just try and watch this and see if there's anything else. And I realized that the pacing, the plot, the dialogue, it doesn't matter because it's an experience. You're, it's, it's like as if you're kind of, kind of like Fuss, the the character of Fuss, where he's just kind of like walking around the city and being drunk and doesn't really know what's going on. Yeah, you're kind of that sure. character as well. In <clears throat> Because you're just following around. And that's how I felt like watching this movie. I honestly, when I read the description, I was like, I really want to watch it. Like, I really want to like this movie. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the performances of the main two I thought was amazing. Um, mm. uh, and then uh, the sound design and the score by Niels Fromm. Uh -oh. Niels then, Fromm for me is like, I think in one of the the, pan the pantheon of musicians in my life, mm. he sits there as well with... Wow. Um, and also incredible, yeah. if you've ever seen Niels from play live as well, that's a real <laughs> yeah. treat. Like just thinking mm. about it is giving me the, the goosebumps. Ooh, and also you had the um, a couple of DJ Kutzi tracks in there as yeah, well, yeah. which I thought yeah. were really... And you had some... Brilliantly uh, employed. You had Mozart in there. Uh, or was it Mozart? There was a few like symphonies that were put into there as well, mm. um, like classical music that mm. were really nice. Um, but yeah, what about you? Uh, yeah, so I'd seen this film once before. I think I watched it um, a couple of years ago, maybe during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I remember liking it back then, um, but maybe having some issues with it and then watching it again, I think. Yeah, again, I think 
what I really admired about it um, came to the fore, but then also what I, the issues I had, which seemed to be kind of similar to what you guys are talking about. Those issues were still there as well. They didn't, they hadn't dissipated in the time. Um, yeah, again, I think, I think this film kind of sums up in many ways what I, my conflicted feelings about um, tracking shots and single takes in general, because um, I don't think, I don't know if I've mentioned this uh, for any of the three films we've talked about yet, but I, I'm one of those people that th thinks that the, 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 mas the mastery or the craft of filmmaking exists in the edit from shot A to shot B. So when you're telling me that, uh, when you're presenting me with something which has no cuts, basically, as if that's something that inherently makes it impressive, that's where you start to lose me. I, I do think tracking shots and single takes can be great, but I think they're great if you don't realize them, if they don't mm -hmm. call attention to themselves, because then they've been used to some effect other than just to yeah. is, effectively just like wank off and look how impressed, yeah. look how difficult this must have been to well, shoot. That's, that's where like dialogue is really important. Exactly. You know, and exactly. That plot is really important. And I, I will say this, watching one of the pros, one of my positive takeaways from this experience watching was that I forgot completely halfway through or I wasn't paying attention to the fact that this was still an extended single take, which I think um, speaks to one of the things that the... The, the conceit of this film, which doesn't totally work for me, did achieve, though, which is that it lent this film a sense of emotional authenticity. I think that even if it wasn't very compelling to watch a lot of the time, mm. i.e. boring, I do think that it felt realistic to me. I felt yeah. like I was being dragged on a night out at 4 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. with a group of people who don't even have the same first language as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, and I, gi I give props to the team for committing to that. They could have made this a, um, they could have all been German or they could have yeah. all been Spanish or something. And um, their dialogue might have been more fluid, but it committed to this premise of these people trying to connect in a very specific time of the mm -hmm. of the morning in a, in, a, in a particular context. Which, and I, and I thought it's interesting, but it just made it sometimes not very enjoyable to watch. Yeah. Is I guess no, what I'll yeah. say. I have more thoughts than that, but mm. I feel like I could end up ranting. So yeah. how about Sweet. we um move to favorite scene? Okay, yeah. What, did what? you give your initial thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay. yeah. <clears throat> I think um I, I'm I'm we're all on the same page with mm -hmm. I think the plot um mm. yeah. as it were. Uh but we'll get to I think we'll get to the nitty gritty when it comes to armchair moment for sure. Yeah. Um let's say favorite moment instead of favorite scene because there is no scene. There is only one scene. Um, and it's the entire movie. Uh, <laughs> but favorite moment um, for me uh, is actually the moments where it doesn't go haywire or crazy or it gets driven into chaotic madness towards the end. It's actually kind of the um, the quieter moments. Um, there and there are th there are three, but I because uh, I, I want to give an honorable mention to Costas Cry at the end. Um, cause I thought that was like one of the most spectacular oh, cries in the, in the hotel in the room. Hotel. Yeah. And I was like, Shoot. holy, f Fantastic. I was like, mm. this is like mm. incredible. Um, just a release of euphoric cry. It's crazy. <laughs> um, but there's, uh, another, uh, memorable mention is, uh, honorable mention, sorry, is roof, the roof moment, because it just gave me memories that gave me yeah, like, yeah. memories of drinking HDB in Singapore. Singapore yeah. That right was there. like, I was like, yeah. we're all whispering. We're all like yeah. having our beers and our cigarettes and we're like all laughing and trying not to, I don't know. That just it's like being me, on like, my roof in my yeah, place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Shh, or your voice <laughs> mentions if you've ever been to like <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. in the downstairs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that just gave me like, yeah, like visceral memories of that time. Uh, but the my favorite is the piano moment. Um, just because I thought that was that was like a beautiful, tender, intimate. And that's when I actually liked these characters. And mm. that's actually when I thought like when I first watched, I was like, oh, this movie's like a beautiful romance that's just gonna like be kind of a, a before where it like they end up in the sunrise and then they have to let go let go of each other. And but no, it does not end up being that. And I kind of wish it did. Um, because that's those beautiful, tender, intimate moments is where for me the movie really flourishes and becomes real and becomes personal. The second half is just like, what the fuck is happening? Mm. Um, so yeah, the piano moment really sums up what, um, what this movie could have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I, I, yeah, I would also go with the uh, the piano scene in the coffee house. Shit, I was gonna. Go all, for that. <laughs> maybe yeah. we can have a. Little, I, I do have a runner up. I can give as well. Yeah, but maybe we can no, just no, all chat yeah, a little bit about, about that scene for a moment. moment. I think like 
what you said is that you described it as a moment where you actually liked the characters. Yeah. What I would describe it as is it's like a drop of water for a man dying of thirst or something, which <laughs> yeah. is yeah. a little bit yeah. of emotional depth yeah. in a film that yeah. really doesn't give you a lot to work with. And I think that's because they were aiming for something more naturalistic. They didn't want characters having lengthy monologues explaining mm-hmm. their motivations or their inner you know, crises or anything like that. And I kind of admire that, but at the same level, of you could have done with a little bit more of that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Like her, not just her playing the piano, which is really great, even though I think it's pretty obvious she doesn't. She's not. She's playing. not yeah, playing the yeah. piano, which I, I imagine was going to bother Jabril even more than. Well, it I thought it was us too. But it was well done. Though. I thought yeah. it was well done. Yeah. But I, I thought, yeah, given the fact that it's a one shot kind of thing. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah, absolutely. But the 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 parts where we could actually see her yeah, fingers, yeah. it wasn't syncing up. But it was more like her face at the end, mm-hmm. and then the conversation that followed about her um, growing up in that conservatory. Mm. And I thought, okay, that's interesting because then that might explain why she later makes this seemingly inexplicable decision to go along with any of this, which 99% of people would have pieced out like so quickly. I mean, the fact that she goes like at the club yeah, and she just goes with these four creepy men. Yeah, they are. He's like, hey, is the club good inside? And I was like, why are you going with these men? Are you telling me that didn't work for you, Jabril? Dude, I was like- Is the club good inside? (laughs) Man, if if someone did that to me, like if another dude did that to me, I'm like, oh, this guy's trying to fight me. He's like trying to- No, and they are, they are, they are, they, they, I mean- no offense to to these guys, but they are they are threatening. Like they they they, they have like a threatening. I, well, I I would say I mean I would say one of them's a pretty handsome dude. But yeah, one um, of the but the, like the, the, but the, the way Frederick they just guy. approach this. I was like, in what world would a woman be like? But I yeah, think, the, I think the, the idea is that she, yeah. they, what they try to establish early on is that she's lonely, right? Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. She is. She's she's searching for friends and yeah, yeah that, that is true. And she also yeah. she may be on the at the end of a long night out. She's. Yeah. Probably had a few drinks. Buzzing. She's just looking for a thrill. I just feel like there was like this just alarming, uncomfortable. It just really frustrated me. Yeah, I was like, like me too. It towards there's the like end, nothing like, charismatic or engaging or funny or entertaining about this group of lads. No, <laughs> they're like, like sitting yeah, on yeah, a stolen was, car. It's like, like it's like yeah, me, exactly <laughs> the stolen car. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. So you described it like made you think of being a kid in Singapore. Like this is equal to watching a bunch of drunk teenagers. Yeah, which yeah. Is not very entertaining at all. That would suck. <laughs> but again, teenagers. These are grown ass men. Yeah. So that's why it's like it's it's a, there's something a little unnerving about the yeah. fact that like she just fully accepts the fact that she's just going to follow these guys, not knowing who they are, mm. and they look sorry, but they look dodgy. They look. They dodgy. Just like giving red flags yeah. left and right. And I'm like, yeah, let's just follow them. Let's mm. see what happens. And then they steal beer from a convenient. I'm like, y'all are like 30. Like, let's, yeah. what is happening? And she continues to be like, yeah, no, they're fine. They're, they're, yeah. fi- they're absolutely also, fine. Like, it is a weird Berlin thing. Like, I, sure. I, I'm not a fan of Berlin. So I'm not going to spend no, this entire really. time shitting. I think it's overrated and elitist. Um, mm. Drop yeah. the bombs. Yeah, no. yeah. It's oh, elitist we'll dive into on the on the left side the rather episode. than the the like a right side. Mm. But like, it's like trying to go to a club in Berlin and you have to like physically look like shit, or they're gonna be like, no, you're not allowed in. You know, yeah, like you, you have can't, to. It's, yeah. no, it's no Singapore clubbing. It's it's like you. the complete opposite. Like yeah. you have to like. Anyways, regardless, <laughs> um, I, there was like things where I was like, okay, maybe in Berlin, you know, you can like go into a shop, take a beer, and then in the morning you can pay. Sure, sure. Like if you know the dude. But then like the guy was lying the entire time. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think about performances? Unless you have a runner oh, wait, up for the uh, scene. Very quickly, I, yeah. I do, yeah. speaking, cause you, Honorable it's, mention. it's an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the score, Neil's from mm-hmm. score as well. But I liked when they went back into the club after mm, they pulled wow. off the heist. Yeah. I mean, from a plot standpoint, big, perhaps my biggest gripe <laughs> or like nick, nick, uh, picking no, nits, no. Yeah. Um, why they went back to the club straight after pulling off that heist, which is literally down the road from the bank that, and the getaway car. But anyway, <clears throat> more just like the bliss, like that 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 sort of um, ecstasy they're yeah. feeling when they go back mm. in there. And I just love like you've got like the the DJ Kutzi track, Marilyn Whirlwind, but then it cuts out to that Niels from school. Mm. And then there's like the guys are just getting naked in the back, whereas yeah. um, Leia Costa and Frederick Lau's character just start making out. I think it there was a, a, a moment of euphoria, euphoria there. And they do yeah. say that bank robbers do often have like an incomparable high after mm. pulling off, getting mm. out, escaping mm. from the bank heist. So I just, I like that scene as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. The five finger discount, man. Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. 
<laughs> the first heist was those beers, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See? Red flags. <laughs> it was just going to lead up to a, a bigger heist. Um, favorite I that was what the whole movie was based on. It's just, a, it's just like they stealing beers. They convinced this woman to steal like three yeah. beers. <laughs> oh, wait. They, they steal three things. They steal a baby as well. They steal a yeah, baby they steal a well. baby. They steal like, a baby. That's when I'm like, why do I like yeah. these people? Anyways. And they stole two hours and 20 minutes of my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No, no, I'm but, kidding. I'm kidding. But I'm kidding. Go into favorite performance. Yeah. Um I I was going to pick Leia Costa. Mm -hmm. Um I hope that's how you pronounce her name, Leia Costa. But I will give it to uh the camera person. Uh I will give it to Sterla Branth uh Grovelin because I felt like he was just we can, as we can do that. This is second time in a row Raf is being no, no outside of the box. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Performance. Yeah, yeah. La on last week's episode you gave it to the background extras. Yes, yes, I the did. The background performance. Just cuz I want to I I wanted to give it a little bit of a different uh quality to because you know, we're obviously it's it's favorite performance so what you're thinking is you're going to give it to one of the stars of the film. But for me the star of the film is as much the camera person because of like they literally had to mm. be a part of this experience yeah. just as much as What's his the, name, Raf? Storla Brent Grovlin. I don't know if that's how you say his name. He's a Norwegian uh, dire mm. uh, yeah, director, photographer. He's a cinematographer, uh, but he was the DOP for this film. And if you see the the, the making of or some mm -hmm. of the behind the scene footage, it's literally him and the sound guy following them through yeah. the entire Damn. journey of this film. So props to them both. But obviously with... Um, yeah, as someone who like you know is enamored by this form, mm -hmm. by the long take sequence, like this guy goes above and beyond just to like capture all these little mm -hmm. moments, as well as like these explosive action set pieces that we get. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna give it to the camera person on this mm -hmm. one because yeah, just as vital a character as the actual characters in this film. And right. I did I did appreciate how they recognized his contributions by giving him the first credit yes, at the end of the, the movie first credit. Yeah. instead of the director. Yeah. So yeah. goes to show. Um yeah, I, I I really I really enjoyed Lia Costa's performance of this. I thought she was fantastic. Mm. But I was I was actually gonna give it to Frederick Lau, wow. who played Sonny. Sonny, mm. who's sort of yeah. I suppose the romantic interest, if you can mm -hmm. call it that, yeah. or the male lead. Um I just really, I really, I really liked, I really liked that actor. It's mm. one of those things where at the beginning I thought he looked sketchy as hell, mm -hmm. as did all the other guys, and he was kind of annoying and not at all charismatic. But I just think there was um, a believability and a softness to his performance, and he, that actor was kind of giving me a bit of a Marlon Brando yeah. energy. Yeah, mm. like I at first that. he looks like a bit of a bruiser, but then yeah, yeah I, could, I could kind of see after a while, mm. you know, how this character would fall for him a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, his yeah. character definitely grew on me definitely. throughout the movie, yeah. Um, and you can see that he's really torn. Well, mm -hmm. I felt like you could feel that he was torn by his guilt and in, in getting Victoria yeah. involved in all of this. Well, like, I, I, like when he was saying, we're, we're real Berlin boys, you know, mm -hmm. like it's like a t a, he feels like he has to be something like he has to be Berlin and yeah, he has sure. to be yeah. prove something, prove something. But I, I, I'll say that, um, one of my favorite um, performing performing moments or performance moments is um, apart from Laia Costa's cry is his uh, when he's wounded and you see him lying on the on the on the couch in the hotel and just the, before they go up into the room. They, well, mm -hmm. he, just that whole journey mm -hmm. of him going like you know processing and and being in physical pain and then like the moment where he's dying. I thought that was like man, that's a beautiful death. Mm -hmm. Like you're di you're dying quite beautifully on camera, my friend. Yeah. Mm. Um, for me, I was gonna go with uh, Burak Yigit um, for his uh, portrayal of someone getting an anxiety attack. Yeah, that yeah. was oh. that was real. I, I, when I saw that, I was like, "Fuck, I've been." There I'm before. having it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's giving uh, me an anxiety yeah. attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, <laughs> pretty yeah. much the night before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I thought yeah. that was incredible the way he did it and like the way they tried to calm him down and stuff mm. um or, yeah, just, or didn't try to calm or him didn't down. try to in calm the case him of down, boxer yeah. you just like yeah. it's just like beating him up yeah. <laughs> that's what friends like, do back yeah. in the car yeah. Uh, back in that yeah no i just i just really i thought that was a good one and i kind of liked his his character he's like yeah bling bling blinka yeah. bling bling blinka yeah. I, I really liked him he um 
I don't know. Yeah. yeah. He reminded me of you a little bit. Yeah, he reminded uh, me of myself uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I have to was, say, uh, yeah. say Marco. <laughs> oh, yeah, Marco. Marco? No, I no, think no, more no, Jabril. No. Yeah, more me. I mean, the hair. I mean, we also kind of look similar. Yeah, you kind of look yeah. similar. And I, I saw photos of him. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Great. Um, all right. Do we have a favorite quote? Even though it a little bit hard favorite quote in this one, would yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah. I, I drew a blank. I'm afraid. Yeah. I I was gonna what I maybe it's a lack of a quote, but mm. I found really funny, and then I kind of like went into a daydream. But it was like in Germany, we don't speak in the lift. <laughs> yeah, oh, in the yeah. yeah, I really like that. Don't and speak. then my daydream was. Um, Basically, basically in Germany, people don't like cross the street when it's red. Like, oh yeah, you know, in like France here, as well. You, yeah, no, yeah. In yeah. France, people, yeah. No, no, you, yeah, you don't like you don't cross the street when it's you have to wait for the green man. Really? Oh, in Germany, you mean that you you they just walk wherever? No, 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 no. Oh, no yeah. They they wait for the green man. Oh yeah, in France, even if it's an empty street. Oh yeah, same, same. In, really? In France? Well, at least in this where I was in the south of France. Oh, but you're and in that. Rich. My American friends were like, "What? Like, why can't we walk? There's no one." I'm like, "Everyone, wait." It's <laughs> no, protocol. No, because I've been to Paris, man. Yeah, but I think in Paris is a different. <laughs> it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's a big city ting. But yeah, I, I just went on this daydream because I saw this. Uh, this skit of two guys um, on opposite sides of a traffic light trying to fight and there's no cars and they're like waiting for the waiting green for light the green to go light. and have a fight but they're actually on the opposite yeah, uh, no. oh and yeah. those guys also start a fight with some strangers oh uh, yeah red yeah. flags red, that's, everywhere that's before yeah. they go up that's to the roof before they right? go up to the roof after they stole the beers yeah. god damn okay um Okay, instead of favorite quote then, since I will I will applaud uh, the improvisational um, entirety mm. of this film. I mean, beautifully improvised, so naturalistic mm. that you just feel, wow, how how did they do that? But maybe favorite musical moment or favorite mm. bit of like, you know, soundtrack. For mm. me, let's say, I'll give an example. For me, it was the beginning. You hear that like, the beginning <laughs> yeah. of, yeah. I was like, yeah. damn, I was like, I'm into this. And yeah, you see her too. dancing and I was like, all right. Sure, the light strobe almost gave me epilepsy, yeah. but like. <laughs> great opening, sh I mean, opening shots, one, yeah. one shot, but like that great opening yeah. images. Sequence, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And I just love that banger, that banger of like, dun like mm. dirty That's dungeon techno. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's a great DJ. So any musical like bits? Well, I guess you mentioned. I guess yours. yeah, kind of when yeah. they go back into the club a second time and, mm, and yeah. that soft, plaintive mm, um, yeah. music comes over the score. Yeah. Um, for me, it was when they were going up to the roof for mm. the first time and they were like going through the passageways yeah, and stuff, and they kind of cut similar. them. They cut the the dialogue and they just yeah. had music yeah. going on. I love it. I love it when mu uh, movies do that yeah. as well. Which I wonder um, what if that was like purely on a filmmaking choice for to avoid any sort of sound the camera person and the sound I think that was just because making, they were like we, we we can't listen to these guys talk anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> it's so, bo yeah, it's like, so boring. Well, they were just like going their up chat, the stairs. Their chat in the yeah, elevator yeah. must have been really boring. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> just, like just start playing the sad music it, for yeah. some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put, roll Q and Q and music. Um. All right. Mystery. No, armchair, armchair. moments. Sorry. Armchair. Sorry. I'll yeah. get these right at some some point. You know? <laughs> I'm like, fuck these. When we record the last podcast we ever do, that's when you'll yeah, get it right. That's when I'll get it right. I'll be like, guys, I got it. <laughs> Favorite performance first, right? Um, <laughs> no. Nope. All right. Ar arm. I feel like armchair moment. We're gonna get. We're you know we have a lot of um, uh, similar mm. kind of almost yeah. altruistic, not altruistic, uh, vitriol for this film. Um, but I'll I'll say it first. Red flags. Fucking red flags. Yeah. I'm like, in what world? Especially I mean, I just don't I, I just didn't believe it. I didn't buy it. Yeah. The first time around, again, I didn't care because I was like, my God, it's all one take. Whoa, yeah. it's incredible. But now I'm like, what? In what what? Mm. Even if she's the most eccentric, open, like carefree, risk-free. I mean, again, I I don't know, but it's like yeah. I just feel like it wasn't believable. Yeah. And I would want I wonder like if 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 we ever get to like have you know a, a female person in this podcast that talk about this film, I wonder if she would have the same kind of uh, reactions to like. Yeah, oh my God. yeah. I wonder. Yeah, yeah. But um, so that the red flags are the first thing, yeah. and then like the unlikability of of how the character, like the journey of unlikability the characters mm -hmm. take, because they go from being some, they go from being unlikable to like, okay, maybe I like them a little bit now just because there's a more tender, intimate scenes, and then like literally, I was like, who fuck these fuck these characters? Yeah. Yeah. they steal a baby. I'm like, what the? How am I supposed to? Why am I continuing on this journey yeah. with them? So, yeah, 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 and like. Why are you running or like why are you going to this like putting yes. a baby potentially yeah. yes. in harm's way? Like 
particularly for the Victoria character. I mean, like I know it's scary the prospect of turning yourself into the authorities, mm. but like at a certain point, it's like you give it up. You're talking about yeah, like no, talking maybe about a few it. years in prison or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you could get out of that. Uh, like so how much old of this are so the, How old are these characters supposed to be? I don't know, in their late twenties. I would yeah. say like our right. around our age, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's. I mean, yeah, I think in terms of armchair moments, I've sort of already covered a lot of what I had. A, issue with i think yeah definitely like sort of deepening the emotional yeah. intelligence mm -hmm. of the characters i think working on some of those relationships a bit better i think yeah definitely like the first hour again i i don't know if it would have achieved the same effect if they had cut it in half if we would if i would have bought into the emotional realism as much mm. or into their relationship if we, i didn't spend so much time with them but i just got to say it wasn't compelling yeah. viewing right i mean mm. it would have been nice so that i think if they could if we could have done something a bit it. more different you know mm. yeah like I want to see what this movie would, would be like if it was cut. Like, the same exact thing. Just cut it up and take mm. out the... the uh, what it, I guess, like, the purgatory bits. Yeah. You know? Because it was just, like, there's these, like, moments of just, like, ugh, I'm in a pit of just boredom right now. Mm. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like, it's funny that you guys say it because those are the moments I enjoyed the most because I think they're the most human because you're just seeing humans like interact as they would and not every part of life yeah. is I like well, I think, no I like it but it's just it's it too dragged much, on too it's too much, much sure. of it like too did it need to it. be that really constitutes about an hour and half yes. of this film which yeah. I will I will say and that it's not like it's particularly fascinating no. exchanges it's, it, it's what you would expect from people who are drunk yeah. on, at 4am yeah, yeah. in the morning like what sort of level of conversation they might have especially again because they don't know each other they don't speak the same first language yeah, yeah. no and, and I will say this movie um it, Another part of its like kind of downfall is its length. It's just yeah. overly indulgent with its length. I'm like, you can definitely be more concise and coherent by being 90 minutes. And I think for the, sure, stuff, the, the stuff that happens after the bank heist, I mean, Jabril mentioned he was quite bored for the last half an hour of the film as well. Mm. I, I actually think once they were on the run or once they committed the bank heist, mm. I was really quite hooked to what I was watching. Mm. Mm. But I think it was, uh, there was a sense of like um, suffocation and dread as well yeah. because I, what a terrifying situation that must be to be oh, on the run yeah. and for it to see it all go tits up so quickly. But, um, but yeah, it's more just like that first hour, I suppose. Yeah. And if I could yeah. fix it, if I, so actual armchair moment, what would I do to change this film? I would make this more to, to the vein of before where it's, it literally is a romance, which I thought. Yeah. You I, could have cut the, the, the rest of the gang out of the beginning yeah. and then maybe they, they could have, they could have shown up at, sorry, I'm swinging. They yeah, could have, right. sorry. <laughs> they could have showed, <laughs> they could have showed up at the coffee house yeah. after they had that moment over the piano, and the, and 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 just, we could have never we could have not seen them by that point. Yeah, and they could just be these friends that need her to come along f to do a little favor for them, and she does it because she fancies this boy. You see, I don't understand why they even went that direction with the heist. The like the the oh, you the, mean the, like the, like you the, the seen entire them in half of a, a single the, take, like a single take of like of, essentially. I was like, this is yeah. more beautiful than like what the well, why they did is that it? with Before Sunrise, before sorry, Before Sunset, which is mostly yes long single takes and mm. is in real time as well. Yeah, but anyways, so I digress. Yeah. Um, a lot of good, a lot of good. That was, that was like our best armchair moment. We had mm. a lot of a lot of critique, mm. um, which is good. Uh, okay, mystery question. Here we go. Which city would you want to be in for an all-nighter? Much like this one, except, you know, we don't go into a heist. We just have like an all-nighter going clubbing, going drinks, like kind of 4 a.m. You're walking the streets. You're having, you're, you know, meeting new friends. You're having a ball. What city would you like to, to be in for, for that? I'll give kind you of like moment. a top five. Oh, okay. Ooh, shit. Easy. Ooh, easy. Ooh. Okay. In fifth place, it'll definitely be back home in Bahrain. Nice. Because it's like a chill, but like all nighter kind of thing where you go to like people's houses, you know, nice. like you can, it's a very adventure, like kind of like, oh, they, they've got something going on here. We'll go there. Nice. Um, in fourth, it'll be uh, Koh Samui. Oh yeah, yeah, Koh Samui. We've done that. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of like Asian places because of course I like there. to party and then eat and then party and, and then, then eat, wake up and on, then sorry, party and then watch eat. the sunrise on the beach. Yeah, oh, well, sunrise dude. on the beach. Yeah. yeah, and then so yeah, in third place it's gonna be Bali. Yeah, one hundred percent. Number one, uh, sorry, number two is Amsterdam because mm -hmm. it's just oh, yeah. like a great all nighter kind of place. Mm -hmm. And number one's gonna be Singapore, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Singapore. Nice Singapore Just night life. Yeah, because we yeah. know it. We know and it. we've done that all nighter loads yeah, of times. Sure. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
it's it's just the best place I think for all nighters and being safe as well. Mm. You're not gonna get like. You're not gonna go rob a bank or whatever. You're not <laughs> yeah. gonna be like yeah. shooting, yeah, you know, or no. assaulted a grass or assaulted, store. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's yeah. true. Singapore represent. Mm. Yeah. Oli, do you have any like a top as well? A top I mean, I three? Jabril mentioned a few that I would definitely think about. Um, uh, oh, that was one I was just thinking of. I um, oh, ra- this is random, but Budapest. Oh. I remember I spent an all nighter in Budapest once and. Uh, I think Budapest could be a stand-in for a lot of different mm. European cities yeah. here, but it's just really not too big, so you can walk everywhere. Real looks really beautiful in mm. night, at nighttime. Like you've got the old city as well. You've got those cobbled streets, mm. and it's just one of those cities where there's always after-hour bars. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm. we don't have that here in London, mm. but you can always find a bar that's open till basically the last person leaves. It could be midday, yeah. wow. um, and then there are always people wandering the streets, especially during summer. And there are people playing music on the streets. Yeah. And you're by the water. Could show by the bridge. Oh, yeah. That sounds yeah. lovely. Um, let's go to Budapest, guys. Let's oh, do absolutely. I've never let's been. do an all-nighter in Budapest. Yeah, been, neither. Yeah. Neither. Because I was going to... Movie newbie trip. Corporate yeah. retreat. Yes. The uh, theme, the and, theme is Budapest. Budapest. <laughs> yeah. we'll, and we only do films around that that are have been centralized in Budapest. Um, which is a few because now there's a big you know film scene in yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've done Midsommar, right? That was in oh no, that's not Budapest. That was Bulgaria. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Was it shot in Bulgaria? No, but yeah. set in Sweden, right? Set in Sweden. set in Sweden. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would have I would have a couple of European cities. I would have Lyon. Mm. I would have Prague, which is kind of yeah, like Budapest sure. vibes. Yeah. Um. Ah, I would uh, Venice honestly was a great because you can just walk anywhere in Venice. Yeah, yeah. yeah but like you have to think like all nighter. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So like, what are you gonna be doing between three and, and like, like six, six in the morning? Yeah, seven absolutely. In the morning. A lot of European places are like shut. That's true. That's true. I mean, again, I think Lyon. I've I've done it before, and it does have a bit of a more vibrant nightlife. Mm. Um, and it's just a dope city that you can easily walk around in. Um. I'd have to give a shout out to Bali for sure, for mm-hmm. sure. Melbourne, just because of that Australian nightlife hospitality. Yeah. I remember partying in Melbourne and like being invited to like random house parties just because like that's just the way to go. Yeah, yeah it's like you're on the way out and they're yeah. like, house party. Like, house party. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, obviously, sing, oh, yeah, house sing party, up, you know, house yeah. party coming to have a brewski, man. Uh, <laughs> can we and snort some of this? Um, <laughs> 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 so that by Coca. Yeah, yeah. I did many drugs back in Melbourne. Um, and I would say, and that's not going to the FBI man at all. Um, I would say, and then yeah, Singapore. I mean, yeah. it, it definitely has an outstanding nightlife. I mean, I don't know if it, ha- it still outstanding. has. Outstanding. Yeah, no, Is it I don't, outstanding yeah. because it was our nightlife. No, 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 we no I don't think so. Because I've think, had, <laughs> I've had fucking uh, all nighters like the last time I was there, and it's chill, like. Yeah. It's super nice because you can go and eat. Because like a lot of all nighters in Singapore is eating. Yeah, so yeah. You go sure, to like sure. you can Newton, you can La Passat. Yeah. Uh, you can go to Kalang, Kapong yeah. Glam, and just like eat and eat and eat and eat. That's Especially true. if I go with my local friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They do a uh, supper. Yeah. That's a, like eating at like three sure. and four in the morning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do miss that. Yeah. Spice R.I.P. Spice all right, well R.I.P. for a good reason because <laughs> they Cause, R.I.P. Because they are oh, oh, some poor good. police officer, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? Yeah, I think he was a police or a security guard. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All Any, right, <laughs> rating. Oh, wow, rating. Victoria, <laughs> Victoria. What were we talking about? Yeah, uh, what we were some reviewing? Movie, I think. Yeah. Some movie. I think this ended up being more fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mystery question. Um, I want to see that film. All right. Uh, so ratings. Yeah. What do we got? What do we got, boys? Um, I'm going to go with a... Uh, this is tough, mm. but I'm going to give it a 6.5 um, roasted Turkish hazelnuts Whoa. out of 10. It's very specific. Because <laughs> anyone actually had right? a, she a thinks roasted. they were peanuts. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Has anyone ever had a roasted hazelnut? Yeah, in Singapore, the dudes that are like, oh, with right. the cold. Oh, have you ever that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I don't know yeah. if they're hazelnuts. Yeah. yeah. Mm. To, yeah. to fact check. Yeah. Um, I'll give it six out of 10 stolen babies. Damn it. That, I was literally, <laughs> I was going, well, last review was a miracle baby and now it's going to be a stolen baby. You son of a bitch <laughs> stole my idea. I, yeah. <laughs> Nothing makes me so happy as knowing that I stole uh, that from I you. I knew it as well. I was like, yeah, I bet he's going to say it. He's going to irritate me. That was my heist. I, I stole your, heist your to me. Yeah, you like inceptioned me. Um, oh, God, shit. 
Now what do I do? Uh, I'm going to give. Oh, here we go. I'm going to give it six point nine red flags. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. God damn it. Yes. All right. Cool. And just like that, it's been wrapped. What did you learn from um, from Keep the Rolling? T- Honestly, I think with Keep Rolling, keeping it short is very important. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like my favorite long take. Oh, uh, yeah, long take movie or one take kind of movie is boiling point yeah Bo- is boiling it boiling point? Point? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i think that's really good because it's uh, an hour 20 minutes yeah. i think yeah a lot happens the dialogue is good even though i, th- I think that movie as well was done twice and yeah. they took the second second take second take mm. um so that for me is good and i tr- i think i compare a lot of these one takes to that mm. um Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. like 1917 uh what yeah. else is there? Uh, <laughs> Prisoner of Azkaban, another quorum. <laughs> like when I was watching yeah. Children of Men, I'm like, oh, this is there's a lot of similarities in in the 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 way it was like shot and the way yeah. that he directed it. Yeah, okay. But yeah, uh, I do love the medium. I think it's a really cool way to ex- uh, express like their creativity in the filming filmmaking space. Mm. Like I uh, I don't quite agree with you in in terms of like editing. Like you said, editing is the for me, it's the art the backbone of, of filmmaking. Yeah, the art of filmmaking is, right. is, is editing. But well, like that's for just me, my own personal yeah, so like, interpretation. For me, I believe that um, doing what you can with what you have is the yeah is the way to go. Is the way to go. Mm. And if what you have is just a sound guy and a camera, then the editor is the one that probably has to fall short. Fall or short. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Or if you have a, a lack of actors, then maybe you know. Mm. It, yeah. So I. I I like that how you have um what was that micro so budget broad. of yeah 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 like do with what you have basically film what you have with the limitations mm. you got you know like yeah yeah, yeah. I get that and I it's that. and it's more accessible I'd say to the to the to the person on the street who wants to make a film I think learning maybe the one take is sure yeah, yeah. just to be clear I'm not talking I wouldn't classify say um video based art mm-hmm. or like multimedia work mm-hmm. under this i'm just talking about like a like feature filmmaking i suppose yeah, yeah, yeah. or like no, no. narrative um led fe- feature yeah. filmmaking yeah um so sure. but yeah. yeah 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 for sure no i'm glad now and i think also i'm glad that like out of those three films, you might have preferred Rope the most. Oh, well, hands down. Yeah, yeah. Rope, yeah. Hands Rope was down. the, Rope, yeah. the just, delightful surprise yeah. of this. And I feel like for me. go for Golden Age movies with Jabril because I mm. feel like he likes them. So like yeah. every every theme we have, just throw in a little like you know like nineteen forties, nineteen fifties film. Well, it's easier to to critique, mm. and well, not easier to critique, but like. The flaws is also a huge part of those yeah. old films, and like the way they try to get around like the technological things sure, is a sure. lot more interesting than what we have now, where everything is like CGI'd, and yeah, you, like sure. a lot of films are just yeah. like done with the green. And there's more and, um, practical impl- implementations yeah. in terms mm. of like the effects or the background design, and mm. I think you might appreciate that as someone who's involved a lot in like mm. the crafts and artistic mm-hmm. space, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm building like, a backdrop instead of just shooting. Yeah, it in the yeah, of the city. it's it's it's. Like, I don't know if if it's maybe a bad thing, but like, I wouldn't say it's losing the art, but it's becoming more of a technical space, I feel. And it's very hard for me to see the artfulness from someone that is super technical. Sure. I, I don't know if that makes any sense. You know, like comes to the stage where like, let's say like a guitarist, right? You have good guitarists that people love, and then you have guitarists, guitarists. And they're like super technical, but you can only enjoy them if you understand what's going on. Mm. That's yeah. Yeah, that's what I I'm trying that. to say. Yeah. So like these yeah. golden age things might be cool because like you can see what they're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. very obvious. I, sure, sure. Yeah. 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 I get that. I yeah. get that. Cool. Nice. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Another theme that you've learned from. Mm. Boom. And on that go. note, we're going to end it here. Those are three uh, pretty interesting movies. I, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? They weren't like three ten out of ten. No, 10 no, 10 no. Out of 10s, but it's good that we had that variation. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I really for sure. enjoyed. And that. I think it's good to actually talk about films that we, we sometimes that we have more problems with. Yeah. Mm. More often because I think it sparks a more interesting, constructive debate. Did you think you were gonna have those those critiques the second time around? Uh, th- for Victoria? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think so. You, yeah. you knew that what you were getting I, into. Yeah, I, I okay. knew. I knew, and I, I and part of me was like part of me wished that I had picked Russian Ark instead of mm-hmm. Victoria or Boiling Point. Um, but I feel like I wanted to, 
yeah, have more of a critical um, perspective on a film and and have that that tug of war where we're like, oh, what did we really not appreciate? And have that conversation. Yeah. Um, just because, yeah. uh, you know, every now and then we tend to love a movie so much that we, we, we escape from being critical mm. about it. Mm. So it's nice to have something that neither of us kind of, mm. we, we enjoyed it, but there was a lot of drawbacks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, give us that five-star rating, and get ready for Ollie's theme. Yeah, it's going to be a good to one. To be announced soon. To be oh, announced God. soon. Episode 87 of the bonus episode. But yeah, ciao, ciao for now, my people. Love y'all, and bye-bye. <laughs>